welcome to 30th lecture of video course on travelogy. Today's topic is rolling element bearings. This is the same topic which we have covered in previous lecture, but today's lecture we will be trying to explain slightly in detail terms which were expressed or mentioned in previous lecture. In addition to that, we will consider one or two examples to elaborate to describe how to select a proper bearing for our application. In previous lecture, we discussed about the radial and axial load and bearing selection as per the radial load and axial uh, load. You see that uh, take an example of the rolling element bearing, take example of the ball bearing. When the inner ring or outer ring, they have slightly more curvature compared to the rolling element curvature that will help us in reducing the coefficient of friction, but it will reduce the point of contacts or we say area of the contacts, particularly in axial direction if they are meant for radial direction. In other words, when angle of contact is 0, we are assuming almost a point contact, a line contact, this kind of bearing can sustain radial load. When the contact angle is increasing, then in addition to the radial load, this bearing is able to sustain axial load. We are able to see this kind of configuration. Here, bearing center and um, raised center may also come very close to each other. Well, in this case, ball center and the raised center are slightly displaced. I uh, will say that in this race, with lower ring and out outer ring, centers are displaced. So, contact is happening at the some angle, and that is shown over here some angle of the race where there is a happening it is not a 0 degree and this is more than 0 degree and in this situation it is particularly 45 degree. So, it depends so, on the requirement this can be made as 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, 45 degree. Larger the angle larger will be the axial load carrying capacity. This is another configuration shown in this case inner ring is same but outer ring is slightly inclined. What is meaning of that? This kind of bearing can sustain load only in one direction or axial load only in one direction. In this direction bearing will be able to sustain axial load, but in this direction it will not be able to sustain the load. So, it will be the one direction while this is a both the directions whichever direction you apply load it is uh, there or bearing is able to sustain that load. And this is an extreme, we say that alpha 0, alpha 45 and alpha 90. When alpha is a 90 degree, that means the bearing is going to sustain all axial load, 0 radial load or almost 0 radial load. So, we can quote, we say that axial load capacity increases with the increase in alpha, radial load capacity decreases with increase in alpha. Now, this angle of inclination is important when we select the bearing, when we choose a bearing for our application. And in previous lecture, we say that whenever there are or come, there is a combination of axial and or radial load, we should find out equivalent load and that equivalent load is given as a p is equal to v is a factor what is a rotation factor. If inner ring is rotating, the V will be equal to 1, but if outer ring is rotating, the V will be amplified or we say factor will be higher side that is a 1.2 factor, acts as a fraction of the radial load which need to be considered for equivalent load, Y is a fraction of axial load which need to be considered for equivalent load. In yesterday's or in previous lectures particularly what we felt uh, that y is uh, often more than 1 also. That means, whatever the load has been applied 
we amplify that load and we count as effective radial load. This is a what equation was uh, shown in previous lecture and as well as in previous slide. We said that V is a 1 equal to 1 for inner ring uh, rotation, 1.2 for outer ring rotation. Now, question comes when the axial load and the radial load they are at the phase of 90 degree and we know from our simple mathematical analysis equivalent load should be a vector sum of that f r square plus f a square and square root of that it should be given in this form, but in um, this formula it has not been done. We say that these factors this combination it will depend on the bearing configuration even though applied loads are the 90 degree phase angle and amount of the damage which is done by the thrust load is not of the same caliber is not of the same scale it is of different scale. When radial load is applied as well as axial load is applied is not simply a vector summation you see that is a different than damage done by the radial load of course, it depends on the configuration. So, it is important to find equivalent loads that causes the same damage is done by the experiments is causes a damage same damage as a combination of thrust and radial load. So, we require some sort of experimental parameter theoretically we are not able to evaluate properly or if we do that calculation will not be appropriate will not be full proof. So, that is why we use this factor x and y. In addition in previous lecture we use a one um, symbol E we say that if this fraction axial load to radial load fraction is lesser than E then axial load is not going to affect at all or equivalent load will be a radial load itself. When this fraction axial to radial load I am assuming that bearings are meant to sustain radial load, but in addition some axial load is coming on those bearing or imposed on this bearing or maybe the because of some malfunctioning it is been induced. So, in that factor and in that case F by F R if it is a greater than E we will be using this relation. Of course, in this case when we are implementing this equation assumption is the rotation factor is 1 that means, the rotation of inner ring. If rotation is being imposed for the from x, uh, outer ring or outer ring is rotating then we will multiply this uh, v factor with this or we will v will not be equal to 1. So, we are bound to multiply it. Now, E is been defined in the this uh, text form say E is a dimensionless ratio we are able to see that we are equalizing that is a dimensionless ratio as a force divided by force indicating axial load lower than a certain limit does not affect total load and it is true when we do experiments we are able to find a slight fraction of the axial load is not affecting depends on the geometry. If geometry is perfectly cylindrical geometry and there is only line contact then surely axial load is going to affect, but there is some sort of curvature to retain the rollers to retain the balls then it can sustain some axial load without affecting overall results. And uh, when we discuss about the E we found that value of E is going to depend on arrangement because for different bearings value of E will be different for different static capacity value of the E will be different. So, it is going to be de uh, depending on the static load capacity as well as the bearing arrangement. For deep groove ball bearing, for roller bearing, for angular contact bearing, for self aligning bearing E will be different because their arrangements are different not only this in the same bearing for slightly different configuration different ball diameter different race diameter this will also be different. So, we are bound to use catalog table for this purpose and if I say the in diagrammatically or when I represent in a figure we can say we can represent um, this in x y dimension E in uh, along the x axis and uh, effective force 
obviously a normalization of the force in along the y axis. So, there is a equivalent uh, load divided by v into f r it will be equal to 1 for some time right, till e reaches to a certain limit. After that only this ratio is going to be higher sign. Now, we can um, we produce the same table we show the same table earlier, but we say that if F A that is axial force divide by static load carrying capacity of the bearing is a lesser than 0 0.014, we will not consider factor at all. However, this factor uh, if, uh, this ratio is more than uh, 0 0.014, then we will see whether what is going to happen. And in this situation, if E is turning out to be more than 19 percent, 1.19, then we should uh, take the this factor, otherwise we should not account the factors. And uh, as was a previous slide explained that x and y factor depend on the bearing geometry, number of balls and size of the balls. As uh, any of this parameter is changing, value of x and y will change. So, we are bound to use catalog readings, catalog tables which are generally given by manufacturers. Then uh, we studied about or we discussed about the different series of the rolling element bearing. We say that for the same bore diameter, we have a number of bearing configuration. Well, in this case we are able to see the outer diameter of the bearing is lesser. Uh, just for completion, we say this is the shaft represented and there is a long enough shaft that is why it has been given by this uh, symbolization of this line diagram. Now, bearing has been placed, there is an inner ring which is firmly attached to the shaft, there is a rolling element placed in the cages or in cage and outer ring is in contact with the housing. So, this outer one is a housing. Now, when we are see starting from extra light series to the light series to medium series to heavy series, we are able to see the thickness of the inner ring is also changing, inner ring thickness is continuously increasing dimension of rolling element is also increasing and thickness of outer ring is also increasing. When all of these dimensions are increasing naturally load carrying capacity of this kind of bearing will increase and we often represent this bearing with the bearing series or when we talk about the bearing series there is a one portion what we will call the diameter series which is present with the diameter series over here. Say that diameter series are in 8 number, 9 number, 0 number, 1, 2, 3, 4 number. This indicates that as this number is uh, we are moving from left to right bearing dimensions are going to change, bore diameter will remain same, thickness of inner ring, diameter of rolling elements and thickness of outer ring will change will increase continuously, the load carrying capacity will be on higher side. By default, if nothing has been mentioned, we will assume this is a 0. All bearing dimension have been placed with a 0 diameter series, that is a nominal, that is a default value. Sometimes we want extra light that is on the lower side, 9 number has a lesser load carrying capacity compared to 0, 8 number has a lesser load carrying capacity compared to 9. And of course, their dimension, outer dimension, enveloping dimension will be lesser also. Now, in this situation, we can say the four number series will be showing the maximum dimension, maximum load carrying capacity when we compare among this uh, diameter series uh, load carrying capacities. We can find more detail about all this by bearing dimensions, curvature, and stress concentration factor on this website. This is a this shows that is a SCAF company website, SCAF is a manufacturer of rolling element bearing, they have been uh, developing this bearing since long, so they have a lot of experience and that is why they are able to give the details of uh, dimension uh, on their website. Now, we will just see the one uh, catalog um, snapshot, we say that bore diameter is given over here. The bore diameter is 10 mm, 10 mm, 10 mm, 10 mm. All every complete catalog uh, says a 10 mm. This obviously the snapshot 
which is shown in the slide shows the bow diameter is same. Coming to the outer diameter, outer diameter is initially 26, then 28, 30, 35. Now, naturally this iris is increasing, dimensions are going on higher side. As the diameter is increasing to some extent the bearing uh, length is also increasing, bearing width is also increasing. This is an exceptional case, the 12 mm, otherwise the 8 mm initially, then 9 mm, then 11 mm. This indicates also the bearings are manufactured as a special form. It happens maybe in a rolling element bearings or um, uh, we are going to use in some big manufacturing company, talk about the electric motors or uh, when they require some specialized length and a specialized diameter, then these bearing companies they manufacture in bulk for those companies as well as they release in an open market. Like in this case, this is an open market has come with some special purpose. Say 12 mm suddenly is appearing, it is a special bearing used for some machine, some company in a bulk order and then they had already uh, this kind of dies and this kind of manufacturing processes that is why they have opened for everybody. Similarly, or here the, the 14 mm the extra length is also uh, developed uh, for some company and after that we are able to see there is a continuity in 11 mm uh, uh, length. Now, when we talk about uh, static and dynamic load carrying capacity we are able to see most of the time dynamic load carrying capacity is much larger than a static load carrying capacity. In addition, most of the time rolling element bearing, the fatigue limit is almost negligible. So, whenever we have fatigue uh, consideration, we should opt for the rolling element bearing unless um, it is essential that uh, a fraction of uh, radial load is coming in the axial load, because rolling element bearing roller bearings are generally not very good option for axial load, slight low axial load they can tolerate, but more not more than certain limit. In addition now uh, there is uh, there are uh, some sort of uh, dimension given or some sort of RPM is given over here, we are able to see that 10 mm bearing, 10 mm bore mm bearing 26 mm outer diameter can sustain up to 60,000 uh, 60, RPM of the uh, rotation uh, rotational speed. Now, that is a uh, very high value particularly when we are talking about the, this high value and this is a some sort of a symbolization, some sort of the nomenclature given by the SKF company to the this bearings. What we are able to see 6000 that means, maybe the width series is 0, dimension is 0 and um, this 0 0 is a number which we uh, in previous lecture indicated 0 0 means 10 mm. Similarly, as we move ahead, we are able to see uh, all 0 in this case because of the 10 mm. If we go for the 12 mm, it will appear as a 0 1. If we go for 15 mm bore diameter, then it will turn out to be 0 2. If 17 mm, it, this number will turn out to be 0 3. That, that means, this number is indicating what is the bore diameter of uh, bearing. In addition, there are some sort of uh, suffix a 2 R S H. 2 R S L, 2 Z, these all are the suffix that means, the bearing has been added with this additional um, parameters or additional um, surfaces or additional geometries in that. This is uh, important to understand for us particularly in this case when we are using about R S H that is means that it is a sheet metal or sheet steel which is a reinforced to make it as a seal or a shield. R stand for the generally seal and um, that is why we say when, when you use a Z that is a shielding while in this case R stands for the seal. Now, we say that this is a, there is a context seal and made of NBR that is uh, uh, nitrile butadiene rubber. This bearing is been placed on the both sides when we are talking about the word uh, this um, 2 there is a 2 R S H means that on both the sides. RSH is given or uh, both the sides this kind of seals have been given. When uh, you are using the word R, uh, L and H, L is means it is going to give a uh, develop a high coefficient of friction, L is a stand for the low coefficient of friction. 
we are able to see that um, when we are talking about the operating speech over here, you can see when there is a coefficient of friction on the higher side and bearing clearly indicates is a high side coefficient of friction, operating speed is just 19,000 compared to when it is mentioned L, the operating speed is 34,000, 15,000 more or which is almost double the uh, this speed because of the coefficient of friction. Now, uh, it is important whenever we see this kind of a nomenclature, we should predict or we should estimate what will be the behavior of this kind of uh, bearings. This is a what we say the suffix, uh, generally bearings are suffix, uh, given a suffix of the uh, and and then uh, if nothing is mentioned that means, this bearing is without any seal, without any shield. When it is a given a 2 z, that means, the bearing is a shielded on the both the sides. When the, it is given a 1 and uh, 2 r s, that means, bearing is a sealed both the sides. Now, some definition of a seal and shield is important to understand on when the bearing are without any of this, what is going to happen and how it will be useful or how it will be harmful for us. Now, this is a sketch uh, shown and I picked up from a catalog. So, this is the bow diameter that is a 20 which is shown over here, this is the outer diameter that is shown as a th um, um, is indicated over here, this is a 7 mm is a length of the bearing and this is a dynamic load carrying capacity as I mentioned earlier that dynamic load capacity often is a more than a static load carrying capacity of this bearing. Then uh, ball bearing are known for the very low fatigue limits, this is a very low limit we are comparing that there is a 4000 and just a 1000, 100, 104. Now, this uh, is a operating speed, now, this is a first bearing a specification for the first uh, um, row, this is a specification for row number 2, this is a specification for row number 3, obviously this is a nomenclature for the row number 3. Now, when we say that when there is a bearing is a shielded both the sides operating speed is not changing, that operating speed remains same in this situation and this is for the oil lubricated case. In the this column is indicated the grease lubricated while well, this is indicated oil lubricated that should uh, that means, when we are using the shielded or when we are using the seals oil cannot be used as a lubricant and they are bound, we are bound to use a grease there will be otherwise a leakage and bearing will be starved and uh, there is no point to continue that kind of bearing. So, whenever there is a 2 z or 2 r s or z or r s we cannot use liquid lubricants, because that will not be able we, uh, we will not be able to retain within a bearing. And whenever there is a liquid lubricant compared to grease lubricant we are able to see is a high operating speed. Of course, the weight is not going to change much that is because of sheet metal. Uh, uh, configuration is a light configuration and similarly seal uh, weight is also not very uh, uh, high and it cannot be compared with the bearing that is why that they have almost the same weight for the all three bearings even though specifications are different or uh, the suffix are different. And this is uh, shows a 0 4, 0 4 into 5 will be mul 20 that is clearly indicating and this is indicating that the diameter series that is a narrow down or uh, the dimensions are on lower side. This is the indication and uh, this is the picturization of this or is the sketch of this, this is a bearing without any uh, seal. This is a bearing with a, some sort of shield, you can see there is a contact over here, but there is a, just a touching over here, that means there is no firm contact the coefficient of friction will not be very different. While here the firm, uh, firmly engagement of uh, rubber material uh, uh, the outer ring uh, as well as the inner ring. I mean they are there is a more grip, there is a firm grip and coefficient of friction will be on a higher side in these situations. So, some uh, definitions um, um, because we have discussed a deep groove ball bearing, we have talk about the seal, we have talk about the shield, we have talk about the angular contact bearing. So, some formal definition has been given on this slide, this is a deep groove ball bearing uh, which uh, often is known as a DGBB, the both the rings possess the deep grooves that is why they are known as a deep groove ball bearing. This deep groove means they have a radius more than uh, ball radius, that is why um, um, ball is able to retain or we are able to uh, retain the ball within the uh, rings and uh, that can sustain some axial force. That is why I say that bearing can support high radial force as well as some maybe a fraction of a radial load. Uh, 
there are single rows as well as if you want to go ahead with the bearing selection there are single row deep groove ball bearings as well as a double row deep groove ball bearings. Double row group uh, deep groove ball bearing naturally will have higher load carrying capacity because there are more number of rolling elements which are subject to the load and there will be good load sharing among these uh, rolling elements. Actually the row, uh, double row will show higher load carrying capacity in a static case as well as the dynamic case or dynamic load carrying capacity will be higher compared to single row. Not necessary it will be double it may be slightly lesser than double, but there is a possibility of course, depends on the dimension depends on the length which is provided with that. Then uh, we have discussed about the cage and separator. We say that the cage is uh, necessary uh, to ensure the spacing or uniform spacing. Not even the uni uh, if it, we go ahead with non-uniform uh, spacing, the, all the balls are coming in one instant, and other balls are coming after certain uh, phase lag. Naturally, the load carrying capacity will be decreased, or whatever the minimum load carrying capacity we need to account that. Well when we are able to prevent that kind of uh, incident and we are able to retain their equal spacing or uniform spacing then um, that uh, kind of bearing will can show a better performance. Of course, there is another option that do not use any ring, but uh, whatever the space available it should be filled completely with the rolling element that is why we know as a full complemented bearings. There space uh, again is uniform only the what is a problem then there will be mutual contact between the rolling element bearings and coefficient of friction will be on a higher side on those situations. That is why I say the cage is a required for uniform spacing as well as to prevent mutual contact between the rolling elements which are going to rub each against each other and uh, generate friction and that will generate heat and uh, the bearing may deteriorate the performance or performance will deteriorate with the time. Then we talk about the shield, this is the shield is a profile sheet metal, uh, it is a disc sort of thing and press into the grooves of outer ring. There is a groove, uh, there will be groove in outer ring that is where the contact happens and then they are placed in that they are firmly engaged with outer ring, but with the inner ring there will be some sort of uh, touch or uh, there will be a some sort of finite gap. So, that uh, coefficient of friction is much lower in those situation obviously, that uh, the in if inner ring is rotating sheet is not going to rotate along with that. So, whenever we are buying uh, this kind of a bearings and we start uh, sh uh, sh seeing that and the shield is also rotating with the bearing inner ring, then we are bound to replace that bearing immediately because the coefficient of friction heat generation will be increased. Obviously, that bearings are uh, mounted, but with some sort of misalignment or some sort of uh, uh, inclination. So, we are supposed to change the bearing. Now, coming to the seal, we say it is often made with an elastic material or elastic uh, material will generally the elastomer or we say that uh, any material which is showing the viscoelastic nature which can be conformed to the shape which is desired then this kind of seal works. Uh, in this case particularly uh, if the bearings are sealed of both the sides not necessary bearings need to be sealed both the sides. Sometimes we use a bearing sealing only one side we know very well that other side there is a some liquid lubricant and uh, we want to use that for the lubrication purpose. I have designed number of bearings based on that only the one side uh, bearing seal other side if, they, if there is a bearing seal we generally remove to reduce the coefficient of friction to half. We say that if bearings are sealed for the both the sides then the bearing uh, grease can be retained uh, completely within the bearing and this kind of uh, fully sealed uh, bearings can be used for number of application or typical application is uh, electric motors we generally uh, use a seal bearings in a motor and whenever there is a failure then we simply replace those bearings. We do not uh, re-lubricate the, these kind of bearings every day or even uh, uh, after a certain uh, 100 hours. Now, and, uh, last one which we defined is the angular contact ball bearing because deep groove ball bearing is extensively used. Second uh, largest bearing which is used is a uh, angular contact ball bearing. In this case we say that uh, forces are transmitted in a such a manner that uh, some sort of axial force can be transmitted. That is why you say the raceways or generally we use the word the rings are so arranged that the forces are transmitted from one ring 
one raceway to other under certain contact angle that means there is a some contact actual force will be transmitted and uh, this due to the contact angle the C A stands for the contact angle the angular contact ball bearings are better suited to sustain high axial force high axial force is again the relative term when we are talking about the ex high axial force I mean this particularly slide high axial means compared to a deep groove ball bearing it is not an absolute you know, sense we can't say the, the deep and this uh, SCBB uh, is sustaining high uh, higher axial force compared to thrust bearing that will be absolutely wrong in the situation because thrust bearing are meant to sustain axial force. Well, in this case we are comparing this uh, uh, angular contact ball bearing with a deep grow ball bearing and that is why I am saying that they are uh, this kind of bearings are able to sustain more axial force. Sometime we come up with the bearing selection or whether should we choose um, uh, seal or no seal or uh, shield and uh, we go ahead with this kind of uh, comparison say uh, comparison can be made based on the low friction base can be made based on the high speed of operation whether we want to retain the uh, grease within the bearing or we have uh, operating the machine in a dusty environment and we want to retain uh, uh, bearing clean or we say that it does should not ingress in a bearing uh, rings and uh, between the rolling elements. Sometime uh, there is a water environment or moisture environment then we want to retain the bearings clean or without any water ingress in those situations. Sometime bearings are uh, the seal and the shield are decided based on the operating temperature wood is operating temperature naturally operating temperature 180 degree centigrade I will not be using the seal material or elastomer material because we know elastomer will melt it will start flow and there is no point to use this kind of seals for that kind of application. Now, we talk about uh, comparison is the shielded the both the sides the two end. Uh, they show reasonably low friction that is why the 3 stars or 3 plus uh, have been assigned to this configuration that is why we say that it is a highly or very suitable for this configuration comparing to uh, this 3 among these 3 this is a very suitable uh, configuration. When we talk about the 2 RZ that means the one side bearing is sealed with elastomer other side bearing is shielded so that um, uh, there is a some sort of a sheet metal and uh, this uh, shielding is often required from a dust uh, uh, prevention point of view. Now, it says that uh, seal uh, on the one side the seal and one side shield it is a more like you know, um, hybridization we are able to see um, uh, two pluses in that in extreme case the design is very good it can get also three stars or three pluses in the situation. Similarly, for when we talk about the high speed and we whenever there is a high speed we will be naturally considering the low coefficient of friction again the um, shielded bearing will be preferable compared to 2 RZ compared to 2 RS. Compared to coming to the grease retainability uh, to retain the grease within a bearing what we say shielded bearing has a low uh, retainability compared to seal or seal from the both the side bearings or uh, one side seal and uh, one side shield. So, you are able to see minimum uh, suitability from uh, to retain the grease is uh, with the 2 Z and maximum suitability is with the 2 R S 1 that is a sealing on both the sides. Next expulsion now we say that uh, dust should not enter should not ingress within a bearing again the maximum. Uh, suitability is being given to the seal bearing because uh, dust it, it is more like going to provide complete isolation from any ex out on uh, or ex the external environment. So, from a grease retainability point of view that means, uh, grease remain within the compartment uh, dust should remain away from the compartment uh, these two bearings uh, will be preferable. Coming to the water exclusion generally none of the bearing is very very good uh, in uh, to keep away from the water that is why we, uh, we often we use uh, lubricant additives to remove the water or we say that uh, to uh, capture the water molecules so that they should not corrode or water should not corrode uh, the bearing surfaces. Of course, if the comparison comes we will always prefer uh, 2 RS 1 because it is having contact and water will get a lot of difficulty or with some difficulty water can increase in that. 
coming to the temperature side we say that um, this the 2 z bearing generally steel uh, uh, sheet metal can sustain high temperature naturally in those situations um, only the limiting parameter is a lubricant if it is a grease lubricated that is uh, limiting parameter for the temperature. Coming to the um, um, 2 R Z and 2 R S 1 naturally the grease is a 1 unit, but in addition to that the seal material is also a considerable thing. Uh, if I use a grease of the 130 degree, 140 degree centigrade uh, sustainability, but I use a rubber material which can not sustain more than 70 degree centigrade, naturally the seal material is going to affect the performance and we need to uh, check the temperature, we need to reduce the temperature in those situations. So, it depends on the friction requirement, depends on the high speed application, depends on the grease retainability, uh, it depends on the whether we are operating the machine in dust environment or water environment, we should choose the proper bearing accordingly. And these two diagrams shows that this is the shielded side and this is the seal side and in between will be one side shield and other side um, uh, one side will be shield and the other side will be seal. This is the just to illustrate uh, what is the meaning of shield, what is the meaning of the seal. We are able to see there is a metallic surface and going inside the uh, groove of outer ring while there is no form connection over here. This is just a touch. We discuss about the roller element bearings and um, we say that uh, rolling uh, roller element bearing can be uh, uh, can sustain some axial force, but not a major axial force and that is again shown over here. Uh, this uh, roller bearing uh, inner ring is uh, not guiding the rollers as such, it is uh, it does not have a groove while outer ring has a groove in this situation. While in this situation inner ring also has a groove, outer ring has a groove naturally the um, uh, load carrying capacity in axial direction will be in higher side particularly for this configuration. However, there are uh, some drawback also what we say that uh, in this case because the both the surfaces are happen, uh, coming in a contact there is a more contact force or more contact area naturally the coefficient of friction will be on the higher side which is that this configuration will show high coefficient of friction compared to the configuration shown over here. And second thing is that uh, this bearing the both the bearing is nothing like the uh, this bearing or this bearing the all roller element bearings generally are most sensitive towards a misalignment. If there is a misalignment we need to think about a some sort of a spherical shape. That is why we say that in case of the misalignment we use a spherical roller bearing. Now, spherical uh, there is a curvature given to the surfaces and this means this surface has been curvature. So, that there is a there is a if there is a misalignment the roller will adjust its own and uh, uh, will not create a high stress uh, stresses at that contact point it will keep more or less same stress level. However, in this case uh, we um, know there is a some sort of a misalignment possible will happen because of the some sort of uh, uh, variation in a curvature there is a possibility of the sliding of this rollers it will not be always it will not be always this uh, kind of uh, uh, bearing or very good option uh, compared to this, but uh, because of the this is spherical nature of course, the cost of the manufacturing itself is very high, but on the other side the greater friction force is uh, developed in this kind of a configuration because of the sliding uh, or relative sliding is more compared to the straight roller cases. Then we discuss about the needle roller bearing, we discuss about the two examples of so that were first full complemented or the every space available has been occupied by the rollers and in other case uh, there is a cage which is a separating the this needle rollers. What we uh, discuss about is something like uh, dimension we say generally needle roller bearing has a some uh, specification we say the length of this roller need to be more than 2.5 times of the diameter. Diameter of roller is maybe say uh, around 40 percent, while uh, maximum value in this case from uh, misalignment point of view we can keep and find a long rollers, but from misalignment the capability point of view generally the this length is capital lesser than 10, 10 times of the diameter. So, this is a 
uh, for the needle load or bearing whenever we want to design or select we know should understand that what is the length of the rollers. If you are going for the much larger length it will be really good to support larger length of the shaft, but there is also a possibility the sensitivity towards the misalignment will be much larger in this configuration. So, if we try to uh, summarize about the needle load and bearing we say the considerable greater length than the diameter the length of the diameter length of the roller is generally very large as the length of the roller is larger the bearing length will be also larger in this case. Again um, um, as uh, these uh, rollers are manufactured on a smaller size then there is a possibility of some sort of uh, tolerances or some sort of uh, uh, non uniformity. Uh, that is why we say the rollers cannot be manufactured as accurately as other cylindrical rollers. I means as the length to diameter ratio is decreasing, we have more control on the diametral side or dimension or periphery of the that uh, rollers. Again, uh, we say that uh, generally if the cages are not provided properly and is not fully complemented, then the situation roller cannot be guided very well and they will show high coefficient of friction because there is will be a some rubbing of one roller against another roller. However, the major advantage, major advantage of needle roller bearing is the conservation of the space as the diameter is much lower and if we have a space restriction from a dimension point of view then uh, this needle roller bearing is the best option to reduce the space and they occupy almost the same space as the sliding bearings, but they show much larger load carrying capacity compared to sliding bearings. And uh, many times we use only outer ring with the cage that means this is the cage and outer ring will come and this kind of uh, bearings can be simply mounted on the shaft. The shaft surface is relatively harder, we do not have to separately mount inner ring keep in mind that when we buy a needle roller bearing outer ring, inner ring and cage with the rollers will be separate. We need to assemble it properly. If we are not able to get the dimensions available, we can use a shaft as it is, we can buy rollers separately also. We can make our own cage and uh, buy outer ring and assemble this needle roller bearing. So, a lot of customization is possible. Obviously, the designer role has a uh, designer role increases when we think about the needle roller bearings. Then we talk about the cylindrical roller bearing and some sort of a specification. We say that uh, bearing series generally come with some sort of a specification like a 6 number comes with a um, deep groove ball bearing. Now, in this case we are showing uh, one of the cylindrical roller bearing we can say the single row single row roller bearing and the specification is uh, what particularly to represent the series is only n. When we talk about the two rows this turn out to be n n that is very simple to think. Now, in this situation particularly we are able to see outer ring is not supporting axially, outer ring does not have any shoulder. Similarly, in this case grooves are made on the inner race. That means N or N N N will have only a inner ring. Naturally, if you want to go for a third row, you have to add one more N in this. Just um, slight change uh, from this configuration is N U. E U can be thought as upper. I will say that in this case, particularly the flanges or the shoulders are the upper ring. It is not at the lower ring, or is not at the inner ring. It is uh, on outer ring outer ring can be said okay, this is the outer is a upper ring or um, outer one. So, the shoulders are generally are guided the lips are given at the outer ring. Naturally, if you want to go for the double row what you need to do uh, add one more n in this it will be n and g and in both the cases you can see in this case inner ring does not have any groove while in this case inner groove ha inner ring has a grooves shoulders or lips. Well, in this case outer ring has a lips, you are able to see that outer ring have a lips and then they, have, they are able to retain the uh, rollers in a shape or in a particularly in that position location. So, uh, if there is uh, this kind of um, configuration naturally we have to go ahead with some sort of a specification and what we say that this is the ISO standards. Um, International organization for standardization have um, given some sort of uh, 
um, series or bearing series with a suffix and prefix. That is why we say each rolling element bearing is designed by the code or may be represented by the code that clearly indicates what is the construction, what are the dimension, what are the tolerances and what are the bearing clearances. Bearing clearance when we are talking the rolling element bearing itself come with a number of clearances. We call as C0 clearance, C1 clearance, C2 clearance, C3 clearance, C4 clearances. As a clearance increases the numbers also increasing in the situation. Bearing uh, of course, it is a very bad choice if we go ahead with the higher clearance and the bearing is subject to some vibration. Naturally, the impact loading will be higher and bearing will fail immediately or maybe say uh, within uh, before uh, stipulated time or there will be premature failure of that bearing. Naturally, we need to choose a proper bearing uh, clearance in those situations and that can be represented as a one of uh, suffix. Now, we uh, discuss about the, this uh, series, we said there will be some sort of prefix, there will be bearing series that is a code, then there will be diameter uh, code and uh, that will be what we call as a bore code particularly and comes a finally suffix. And uh, this particularly diameter code is generally given by the some number, right. If it is given a 0, 0, that number that means 10 mm, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, they are non conventional, obviously, that they have been utilized, but cannot be represented with a some sort of formulation. But if uh, for 0, 4 onward, we can predict the bearing diameter by multiplying it with the phi, that is why I say the multiply by phi to get the bearing bore diameter in this case. If bearing uh, lesser than this is a for the uh, configuration, if any time bearing dimension is a lesser than 10 mm, then it has to be uh, represented with a slash. So, the 618 is a bearing series, slash 8 is a d is a diameter of the bearing or bore diameter of the bearing. This is a one case, and another one is a bearing dimension is a more than 500 mm. In that situation, also we have to give a slash. In this case, a 511 is a bearing series, and the 530 is a bore diameter of the bearing. And of course, uh, lesser size of uh, particularly when the D is lesser than 10 mm, those kind of the bearings are often used in instruments. They are used um, also mass produced and available in the market. Now, this is uh, giving some sort of the bearing series, slightly difficult to remember, but when we have table, we have a catalog, we can simply pick up the bearing as per the number. And we know very well in a tabular form when the data are being entered, we try to conserve the space. Less of the space occupied will be better the representation or uh, that will be better uh, from a reading point of view. That is why I say when the bearing number is 0, that means that there is a double row angular contact ball bearing. When bearing number is 1, it will be self aligning ball bearing. When bearing number 2, that is called a spherical roller bearing. Bearing number 3, and when just talking about the serial numbers, these numbers are the bearing series, um, bearing numbers, the bearing series numbers. It is not a serial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, nothing like that. When we say the 1, that means self aligning wall bearing, and it will be for all the catalog because it has been decided by ISO. Similarly, when we talk about the 6 number, we say that it is a single row deep groove ball bearing. Of course, if we increase the number of row, number is decreasing from 6 to 4 even the number uh, uh, number of rows in this situation are 2. So, uh, double row deep groove ball bearing, the single row there is a one number, double row there will be another number for that. The way we have uh, found for the roller bearing, one n is uh, roller bearing and the number of two rows then it will be n n. Similarly, we talk about uh, number other number like a 8 number is a cylindrical roller thrust bearing, it is not a radial it is a cylindrical thrust bearing. For roller uh, radial load carrying capacity, these uh, bearings are numbered or not number as such is being given by alphabet as a n cylindrical roller bearing. If you keep on adding, you give, um, give some other specification, then bearing configuration will change. We have discovered the n u that is uh, upper lip uh, shoulders uh, will be uh, the outer ring in those situations. Similarly, if there is a multi row or the two rows, we can represent that. Uh, cylindrical roller bearing with n n and this is a special one which we call as um, sometime we require a high load carrying capacity in XL direction that can be done with a four point, uh, four point contact ball bearing. There are four point at the contact that is why the bearing is name is being given and uh, is been extensively used for the positional accuracy and this number um, uh, this is represented with the two letters the Q j. 
if there is bearing uh, catalog and we say QJ that means clearly indicate that is a 4 point, uh, 4 point contact ball bearing. Now, let us take one example to understand uh, what we have done in um, or what we have learned in our uh, lecture. You say assume there is a radial and as well as axial load on a bearing and the uh, magnitude of the radial load is a 7.5 kilo Newton. Magnitude of axial load is a 4.5 kilo Newton. Bearing is rot uh, rotating shaft diameter is a 70 mm and what we need to do? We need to select a suitable deep group ball bearing. So, here option is not open, we need to choose only the ball bearing and there is we do not have any other option, but bearing um, dimension is also um, mentioned, but that is only restricted or restricted dimension only is a bore diameter. Other dimensions are not been specified that means, we have open choice, we choose a one bearing series for the deep groove ball bearing that will be 6 series and uh, diameter is a 1 4 series bow diameter series is given 1 4 that is a 70 divide by 5. When I divide uh, 70 by 5 I will be getting a fine uh, 14 number and that means the bearing bow diameter series is 14. So, we can choose bearing from catalog. How? Say this is a bearing with a 14 number and deep groove ball bearing 6 is for the deep groove ball bearing 14 is for the bow diameter. So, both are there. Then this is a with the 2 RS with the seal arrangement, this is with the shield arrangement, this is slightly on the higher side diameter is increasing from 8 to 9, that means slightly higher diameter. If there is a higher diameter naturally load carrying capacity will be more. Here the load carrying capacity dynamic load capacity is 12.4, here dynamic load capacity is 23.8. As uh, we move ahead, all uh, everywhere there is a 14 and then we are able to see uh, bearing width series is also increasing. Initially, it is 0, then 2, then 3, then 4, oh, not 4, it is only up to 3. So, bearing series is increasing. If I read the question back and say, oh, there is no nothing has been mentioned whether we want to seal this bearing, is there any dust environment? Is nothing mentioned to us, so why to take uh, any assumption? Cancel out, those bearings will be slightly costlier. So, we do not require 2 RS1, it will be going to give us a lot of coefficient of friction or higher coefficient of friction. 2 RZ is not required, is again one side is sealed, we, why do we go ahead with this kind of bearing. Similarly, for other like a 2 Z also, I will not be requiring, I, I nothing has been mentioned whether we need to prevent the dust, we need to prevent the, uh, we need to retain the lubricant. We will see that those things later. Let us see uh, first to, to reduce our uh, efforts by cancelling out the bearings which are not desirable. Not, not, not desirable is a bad word in this situation, we say that it is not maybe not essentially needed. If it comes finally as a one of the best configuration, we will choose it, but if these uh, bearings are not essentially needed as such. So, we we'll have some options available now the first number fourth number, then comes seven number, eight number, similarly other number and this number. So, limited choices that is better for us. Now, we can uh, just for the experiment just to explain the concept, we can choose the two bearing and compare. Always there is no, there's no harm that we should not choose this bearing or uh, there is no harm you know why I am not choosing this bearing. This is just to illustrate with some example, I am selecting the this bearing that is a uh, red ellipse in this and similarly this bearing. What has been given in this case? Static load carrying capacity of this bearing is a 31 kilo Newton. In this case a 6314 bearing series a high diameter high dimension side. Static load carrying capacity of this bearing is 68 kilo Newton. So, I know the what is the static load carrying capacity that means the C 0, I know how much axial load has been applied that is the 4500 kilo uh, 4500 Newton or with a 4.5 kilo Newton, I can find out this ratio. See, I have by C 0 that is a sample of 4500 divided by 31000. In other situation second bearing that is uh, F A by C 0 is a 4500 uh, 4, divided by 68000. So, in first case what I am getting, first case I am getting this ratio as a uh, 0.1452, I am not able to find any dimension like this. I have in table 0.11 and 0.17 and this number comes somewhere in between, naturally I have to do some sort of interpolation to come up with a figure, so that I can select. 
I can select what will be the value of x and what will be value of y. Interestingly, I do not have to do interpolation for x this is a constant value. So, for this number, this number, this number everywhere the x value is same I will choose as x as it is, but for y it needs interpolation. Similarly, the, this factor this ratio turn out to be uh, 0 0.0662 again I do not have the dimension available this is the 0 0.056, 0 0.084 actually I have to do some sort of interpolation to find out what will be the value of y again x value remains same. So, we do that x is same 0 0.56, 0 0.56 while in this case the first case the y is turning out to be 1.37 and other case is turning out to be y is equal to 1.65 what I will get in this case p that is equivalent load when we use a x factor and y factor and use as a kind of equation what we find the equivalent load in this situation is a 10365 newton while in second case equivalent load is 11625 newton 25 newton interesting one observation i am choosing a high size uh, series of the bearing and if factor load is increasing to as a that high sign is it appropriate? From load point of view, I say no. This bearing should be selected, this bearing should be rejected because unnecessary this second bearing is increasing the load carrying obviously the applied load on the bearing. Why should we choose this kind of bearing which is it costlier, larger in dimension and in addition to that is applying more load. However, we require some more clarification, we require some more parameter that will, that will be the those parameter will be discussed in our next lecture. We will be continuing with the same example, we will give additional parameter how to choose a right, a proper, a suitable bearing for our application. Thank you.